big bag I've, uh, has grown with me. And it's the sort of thing where you start out with probably something a bit bigger than that, probably something more like a shopping bag size. And you, you gather together the tools and as you compete and as you practice and as you develop your skills, you look at more things that, that are useful to you. And the more things that you have, the bigger the bag. And then you get to a point where the bag is not worth carrying around. The bag is just your toolbox that you use when you're practicing and preparing for a competition. And, and I'll talk more about competition work because that's my focus. The things that I carry separate to the bag are my water bottles. I'll talk about water bottles. This one is mine. This is the water bottle for me because one of the things you do need to do is keep hydrated. Now a lot of the competitions will offer you tea and coffee while you're, you're putting your designs together. You simply don't have time. You just don't focus on doing that because the time that you take to have tea, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee is taking away from the time that you've got to put your design together. So I always carry a water bottle with me. This is a, 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 a good size one, 750ml, flip top lid, easy to get on. It locks so that I'm not going to spill it anywhere. It also means that if I forget any of these others, I know, because I always carry this with me regardless of what I'm doing every day, um, I know that if I've forgotten anything else, I've always got this water bottle that I can use to uh, top up the design or wet some oasis if I'm not, don't have easy access to water, all those sorts of things. So if not, my personal water bottle, then I will have these other water bottles. Now I started out with just the clear one, just the clear spray bottle. Fine, no need to have anything else other than that. And I still use that a fair bit. What I have gone to though is this one because I can see that it's mine. I know it's mine, it doesn't have to. You can see how dirty and used it is. Um, it's a metal one, so it's... it's um, as they say with uh, the, the drink bottles as well, uh, stainless steel is better than plastic because it takes all the heavy metals out of the water. So you're going to get purer water uh, and that might be a consideration if you're using tropical plants or plants that are delicate in some way that you want to look after more so than the ones that you've cut from the garden which are going to adjust to any kind of water that they're presented with. Um, then the stainless steel is better. But mostly I have it because it's identifiable. I know it's mine, whereas almost everybody else has this because these are the ones that are freely available within the, the um, floral area. These are everywhere and you get lost about who's this one. You can obviously you can mark it with your name, but it's, yeah. let's have something that's a bit more individual and go with that. And this one is a really good one for watering your designs once they're finished, once they're in place, and for getting the um, water into the small vials. So easy to do. That way, so it's just a squeeze. Drawback of this, if you're travelling, is that it doesn't seal. So you no know, sooner do you get it somewhere that it goes on its side or something presses against it and the water comes out nice and freely. So just be aware of the, the drawback of that one, but it is a useful one. The other thing that you can use, which I don't because I don't use a lot of the, the smaller vials, is a syringe with a long hose for putting the water into, into small places with your design. So we might have a look at that another time. One thing I forgot about the, the small bag is that you have so many other things that you've got to carry into a competition that this, this one obviously doesn't have a shoulder strap so I actually have to tuck it under my arm or I have to carry it in my hand or put it into something else. So I have now found for myself something that again is identifiable because you don't want to have things that, are, that uh, you have to search to find. But this is obviously going to be something that nobody else has got so it's my new, or new to me anyway because I came from a charity shop. Uh, my new bag for my, my um, competition work. Identifiable, good size, 
I can get that bag, this bag into it, as well as, as some, some other bits and pieces if I need to. It would also mean I could probably get my um, my personal stuff into it as well, so that I wouldn't need necessarily to be trying to um, carry a, a handbag as well. Because again, that's something that, that is an issue at a competition. I don't want to have to be but let me go back. Competition. Hmm. Interesting. Not mine. Tissues. Handbag. Handbag. That's what I was talking about. Stay with you. When you go into a competition, you've got a stack of stuff that you're carrying and a stack of things that you're thinking about. So having to worry about where, that, where your handbag is and uh, uh, if I talk about the World Championships, 630 other people who you don't know, necessarily know who are around in the same hall as you plus the stewards plus uh, the ancillary staff. So rather than worry about where your handbag is, have something that is a multi-purpose item that is easily identifiable as yours, that you know you'll keep close by you, that it doesn't look like a handbag necessarily to anyone who's watching. Okay, let's look at the major bag. The tool box, I'll have to call it from now on, because this is not a bag that I carry with me to competitions anymore, unless it's a competition that is over a long period of time. Now I do a competition once a year that is two weeks. So it's a different, or six different designs every second day. So I end up, a minimum of six, I end up doing you know, between 35 and 40 designs over that two week period. So, and it's away from my, from where I live. So, so I don't necessarily come back to my home base more than once or twice during that period of time because it's an hour and a half drive each way. So I do take this, the big bag with me because that's my toolbox, it's my, expanded version of, of the small one. So let's have a look at it. And as you can see, it's massive and it's heavy. It is, as a, as a basis as the bag, it is a tradesman tool bag because it's got lots of nice pockets on the outside. It does zip up when it's not over full as it is now. Um, easily identifiable as mine. Um, and it works for me. Now what you need to do is go and have a look at toolboxes and tool bags and see what there is that suits you. It's got to be something you can lift, something that, that looks like it's going to have all the right sort of pockets and, and places. The thing I like about this is that it stands on its own. You know, it's designed to, be, to stand open so that you can get in and out of it nice and quickly with your tools. It's sturdy. It's, it's reasonably waterproof, so it doesn't matter if I spill stuff on it. Outside pockets, first of all, let's go around those. This one is where I keep the tool. This one is where I keep the tape measure when it's not in the other bag, so that I know always that this, this pocket, the only thing it has in it is the tape measure. I can always find it nice and quickly and easily. This pocket has all my cutting, fine cutting implements. So, now these are the, the standard scissors that, that uh, you'll see at most competitions. And I don't use them quite much, so they're really rusty. I don't know. They're good, but they're probably good just for ribbon and paper. Not so, not as good as my little other ones that I got special. That one, that's in the wrong spot. It's a paintbrush. I will hide that before you see it. Other colours, these are white, these are um, florist snips um, for fine stems. I mean, they could probably all do a bit of that. Clean, let's do decorative scissors. Now, these give, they give a, um, a decorative edge to things, they're pretty good on um, foliage. That's probably all I use it on foliage, not, not much else. A couple of knives, um, this one's my favourite. Uh, they're both fruit knives because they've got a finer, more flexible blade, with just the short blade and then the, the longer, thinner blade for, uh, very good for foam. 
like that one because it slices through nice and easily. Little snips, again, just things that over the years either people have given me or I've collected for particular tasks that a lot of them I don't use terribly much um, a, a blade. That's all that's in those ones. So for me that works, keeping all the cutting implements in one spot and on the outside so that I don't have to go digging through the things that I've got. So that, that's my other system is that on the outside in the outside pockets I keep the things that I will always want quick access to. The inside has the, the longer term more design function things where, and I'll show you how they're sorted out. This pocket has nothing in it at the moment because I've actually worn through the, the base but normally on that side would be needle nose pliers and I would have my other pliers on the other end. So at the moment all the pliers are on this end. So needle nose, standard wire cutters and that's another blade because it doesn't fit in the, the other end up there. Some decorative wires. So you can see that, that at some point I've been in a rush and I've just put things in back in and I should go back and tidy up the bag. And about once a year I'll go through and tidy up the bag and get it into some assembly to order again. So I've obviously got another couple of pockets there. I can put some more pliers or, or separate the cutting implements if I wanted to. Back pocket has paintbrushes. Now you might wonder why I've got paintbrushes. This one is obviously uh, a fine one to actually do paint type work. These two are for cleaning up. So cleaning up around the bench or cleaning up material on the base, anywhere at all. They're, they're, not, they're not, a lot of people use a, 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 a dustpan and a broom and invariably I've got a friend that, that uh, competes with me and she loses one every competition. And they just get you know, people just have so much stuff around them, they just get picked up and put it. doesn't seem to matter how identifiable they are, they just get consumed in the, the to tidy up the clean up at the end of the competition. So I use a paintbrush because they're far less likely to be um, caught up in the detritus that is around the design because you use them specifically and you don't put them down. So with a, with a dust paint and broom, you, you do it and you put it down because you think, oh, I might use it again or oh, I've got to throw out the, the, the rubbish. Whereas with these, Sweep it all into one spot and you've got it in your hand or into the, the garbage bin that you're using with you at the competition and it's done, it's over and done with. So a smaller one for the smaller bench type work and a bigger one for the, the floor type bases. So they're there. So now I'm going to put the bag to one side so I can unpack and show you each element that's within the bag. So on the top, um, Three things that, that sort of cover everything else, cover the multitude of sins underneath, but also uh, the, the three things that I, I would take out first that I might use, just hiding the rubbish, <laughs> that I might use um, constantly while I'm putting these eyes together. Hand towel, good sturdy size hand towel. Mm. A bit of stuff stuck on the back. That's, that's a bit of. Um, Decorative sequin work that I used. It's still got the double sided tape on it, it's quite sticking to everything. So, a good size, thirsty hand towel. Now, this is something that you'll use for your hands, but also if you have spills, it's really good for putting around a design where you've put um, the wet floral foam or your wet water retaining material and perhaps it's on a wall, so it's going to drip down. You just put that underneath until the drips stop, and so it's not damaging the staging that you're using. Apron, which is here and it almost looks like it's been used. This is a plastic coated one. It was given to me so I feel obliged to um, actually keep it in the bag. And I do use it for, for big work, for when I know that I'm going to get wet. Not so much when I know I'm going to get dirty because I do have a habit of, of wiping my hands. Um, here, so I wear things that um, have the ability to take up the mess there, and I generally I'll wear a different top to put the design together to what I'm going to wear uh, when I go back to see the judging results. But a good apron you might find useful. 
And this is actually a high vis vest. Um, we, in in our, our big competition, we are required when we're moving around the competition area because it's part of a much larger uh, show that's on. This identifies us as someone who's allowed to be there and who um, can be seen easily because they're moving livestock and uh, other sorts of things around. Um, it just makes you, as it, it says, easily identifiable. Probably not something that, that everyone needs to have in their bags, but I'll just have it there so I've got it in case they ask me to have it. Now the rest of the bag internally uh, is separated into bags or containers of the things that uh, go together. So you can see that it's jam-packed full. Well, let's just unpack it and I'll talk about the things that are, that are in there. And this is a bag that contains um, decorative ribbon, uh, paper, raffia, just, just things that might be little highlights or accents but all come into the ribbon type category. These are wooden skewers uh, and they're in here still in the pack because I've just topped up knowing that, that the, the supply that I would normally have in there is, is, is getting fairly low and I haven't actually sorted them. Same with this, this is just a, a little um, miniature stand that I carry just in case I need something of that size within a design. These two glass vials, I know that I put the glass vials in another design at the moment and so I've got them on my workbench that I have a container that has all different sizes of glass vials. So these are just here in case I need them until I bring the other pack back to be reunited with the bag. Toothpicks, as I said before, always essential because you can use them for small stem items or soft stem items and still have water come up through into the plant material. These are coloured sticks to quite, um, so they're just, they're just little um, essentially match sticks that have been coloured and they would not, what you could do with them is most commonly what is, is done with them is to bind them with wire, join them together and have, some, have something that you lay over the top of a, a contemporary design. So they're just there as the new stock. Balloons. Now these are a couple of sizes of balloons. little ones that which which we call water bombs and then the full size ones. Now I use these as a water source within contemporary designs because you, you can have the, the bright colours. So you just put a, uh, probably that much water in the bottom so you know maybe half a dozen drops of water and, and then the stem of the flower and then you can tie them in with wire. These for more like a, a, a small posy or a little bunch of flowers or, or the bigger stem stuff into, into the design. Also good the, these ones for um, covering with skeletonized leaves or sisal and the, that system of then letting, the, letting that dry and then you um, prick the balloon, let the air out and pull the balloon away and you're left with a, the, the same shape as the balloon but made of the skeleton, skeleton ice leaves or the sisal. And that will probably come up in another technique tutorial. You'll be able to look at it. All the different kinds of tape, hot tape, different widths and paper tape as well, different colours that you can get these days. Other kinds of tape. So this is gaffer tape and packing tape, clear tape, just for Salusian designs. The mossing pins that I talked about earlier. So those ones that you can help me here just to see. So that you can put them, keep your, your um, base material into a design. Decorative pins. Gonna run out of room. This bag's gonna have to go on. Maybe I'll put it down here. 
and then I can still lift up the things that I need to show you. So this is cotton and thread and buttons and zippers. I started using zippers a little bit in, in my designs because you can and I can show you. Not so much the white ones, obviously all the what you, you do is um, glue this onto a, a leaf or a bit of bark or something and then undo it and then you have your flowers sticking through. Again, contemporary design, so we'll cover that in some of the other designs that we do over time. This one is... This one is pegs and clips. You know, hair clips are very good for holding things until they're dry. Um, these are the bendy hair rollers. Again, good for holding things together until you're at a, a point where you can join them with wire or the, the glue is dried on them for when you're shaping things. And, and pegs obviously the same deal. These are off um, the elasticized bungee cords, but good strong hook for hanging items for suspensions. The candle cups, which we had one in the small bag as well. Various types of string. Now string, for the most part, if it's, if it's cotton or jute based, can be considered a, a natural plant material, so you can use it. And so I've got uh, quite a range of, of string and a little bit of cane in here. This one's cane, coloured cane. But all different types of that one's a ribbon, so that wouldn't count as much, but it's in there because it's a, a binding type material. This one is glue. So Plastic fix. The mini hot glue gun. So the smaller size, some more cold glue, and uh, the glue sticks that go with, with the little gun. So I've got two sizes of, of glue gun, the small and the large, uh, and that just came about because at one stage I couldn't get the right glue sticks to go into the guns. So you really only need one. And probably the smaller one is better because it, it um, makes you control the amount that you're actually putting into your design and you don't overdo things. This, this one is all stationary type things, so I've got some little brads to hold things together. They're just like a push pin that you separate out once it's through. Um, marker pins, little um, glue, glue pot for when I'm doing some tiny glue work. Cell tape, all different types of invisible tape, cell tape, and some needles. Really good for um, just getting some of the material through the. Sometimes I use it as a fishing line, and I can't, you know, the eyes are failing a little bit, can't always see where I need to put it. Wood glue. This container is. I use, I can use in a design, put a Kins in or some, some floral foam in it, or it's good just as a, a, a staging area, a temporary area for short stemmed flowers. Rose strippers, a couple of pairs of those, who knows why. Just got them there. Um, now, now a lot of the stuff that's in here is just the just in case stuff. Uh, throw it in because I think, well I might be able to use that for something, not no, I don't have specific ideas that what I need it for, but I might be able to use it for something there. Um, plastic tips for furniture, but nice small black containers that you could put water in or you could use to support a structure within your design. Some cotton, what are they called? Cotton makeup pads, cotton, cotton based. So 
I know that at one stage I had to do a design that was cotton, wool and wheat and I had nothing that was just raw cotton and so I, I, I unballed or well, undid these and balled them up so that you could see that it was the, the cotton inside and, and incorporated those into the design. They're, they're good just for cleaning up messes as well. Plenty of the candle cups in here so give me a chance to tidy it up nicely. This is a, a crafting um, punch, gives you a, a, a shape, very good for foliage. Some crowns. Now you, I, I talked talk before about using the crown, melting them down as a wax base item in your designs. But that's just got a, a whole lot of different colours. Some of the bigger um, test tubes that have come out of the container. So really, this is a, a smaller town. Some bigger rope. Sandpaper and a sanding tool for the sandpapers in there. Um, you can use it for cleaning all sorts of things as well as sometimes put it into designs for a bit of a Indian contemporary look. Mm, that's just a bit of leather. I think I'll throw it in here in case I need it, obviously. Some more of those um, decorative sticks that we looked at earlier. These ones are the, the uncolored ones, so it can be used a bit more freely in designs where you can have uh, natural material that is not um, colored. These are just plastic lids and I use them for mixing paint or for mixing glue when I'm in, in the competition room. Screws, wood screws. Again, I just need them sometimes to hold things together. Sometimes wire and pins are just not enough, which must make you think, how do I get them in? Will I use a screwdriver or a drill? But we're going to talk about big items that not necessarily come with a tool bag in another separate video. So that'll be more about the power tool that you might find useful. This is a multi-bladed um, saw, I guess is the best way to do it. You undo the screw there and I've got a few different blades. They're very, very good for cutting branches, plastic, timber, don't need description. It's one of the other blades that goes with it. This is a balloon pump for when I actually need to use those balloons. It's very good for the little ones because they're a bit too small to get them out around. Bit of a wood block. Uh, it's got a, a, a slit in it which is designed for a card to go in. Um, sometimes in a design you might have a little bit of um, a blurb that goes with your design that explains what you've done or is a bit of poetry if it's about a poetry uh, title or artwork or anything else that might be of information so that just sits nicely to, to be able to put the, the paperwork into it and adds to the presentation. A pair of heavy gloves, these are um, in industrial ones, you can see how well used they are um, and I use them mostly for handling rocks and the larger bits of timber just so that I don't lose the sensitivity in the fingers while I'm trying to still do a design. Some stockings, um, good for tying up or tights, whatever you like to call them. These ones are the sheerer ones. Good for tying up uh, things in designs or for covering test tubes for something that's a little bit different. Not a natural material, obviously, so you're going to have to watch the rulings on those. Some more pegs, another blade for the, the um, saw. Another little mixing container. These are things that have just come loose out of the bit of um, plant food. Now what I suggest with the, the plant food, when you do get it, I don't use it a lot, uh, but when I do get it uh, often in, in with flowers that are given to me, which I appreciate more than you can imagine, and, and it's one of the things that always surprises me, I guess it's a bit like being a chef, that people don't invite you to dinner. 
because I do so much with flowers, people don't give me flowers predominantly. And I love getting them. I, I enjoy getting flowers all the time. And I, I appreciate the, the flowers and the thought that goes behind them. So I love to get them. So when I do get these, add it to the water that you're using when you're going to soak your floral foam. Because of what that means is that the added nutrients will come through the foam into the plant material so it's going to last longer than just soaking in, in straight water. Oh, this is a, a, a test tube that's been covered in some um, Chinese silk for a, particularly um, for a designer that required it. These are um, plasticine, so good for moulding, covering up blemishes on bases, those sorts of things. Not a natural product, so they can't be incorporated into your designs, particularly now the plastic bowl. Nail polish. Glittery nail polish, green, very effective for highlights on uh, in designs where you can use it. These are just um, shells and corks and, and a few hooks. Just again, they're, they're feature or highlight items that I might want to add. This is little things I might want to add into designs. These these are more more of the same. Just these are a bit brighter, a bit more glittery. So I have a, a plane and a glitter pack. This is um, sand, but it's mixed with uh, PVA. So it actually moves, it's, it's uh, dynamic. So you can mold it, you don't get the, see how it's growing. Mm. which is good when you, you do a design because you can rather than have to shape the sand and have it too smooth in your design you throw this in and let it settle into into where it wants to be and it'll just stay in that spot and so it looks much more natural because you haven't got that smooth edge like if you were putting sand in you'd get the smooth edge to it like that which which you know, if you're using sand in, an, in a design, you want it for its texture because it adds in the, the texture of the design. So you just throw it, I'll get it nice and smooth so you can see what happens. Now that's, this is available in craft stores. And it's called, mostly called, Thinking Sand. You don't have to do it quite this tight. We'll try again. But you can see now how it's thinking that it wants to do these other things. So we'll just encourage it a bit. There you go. So you get that nice natural flow of sand in your design rather than a, a particular placement. And it's not gritty because it's, um, it's got that the PVA through it. You don't sort of get sand everywhere. Losing out, not much space left here. Some more toothpicks, which we talked about before. Some decorative wire, that's a thin decorative wire. I actually only have that one in the bag because I have a whole box that is wire. Some fishing line, a peg and plastic roll, it should be back in the containers. Some white, or that will probably dry as clear. Glitter nail polish again for the a little bit of a highlight on things. Some ribbon, some clear glass pebbles, and just to cover, usually to cover up kins and or, or bases in in my designs. And again, with those, these are just the the emergency supply because I have a whole range of all different colours that I would normally bring with me to a, a competition. Some more string and a stand. Obviously I've, I've used them mostly for plates but if you've got a design where it, it you've put it on a board and you've forgotten that you know, lying a board flat on the design bench is not really going to display it to its best ability. Perhaps it's a parve or a tapestry 
or a plaque of some description, this will give you a bit of added height in your design without having to worry about what you're going to do. And it's easy to carry because it goes flat. And this one is obviously for cooking. It's a, a five piece garnishing set. And what it does is give me a whole lot of tools that can give me different shapes and effects, particularly for fruit that I'm using in my designs. We have the serrated edge, the vegetable peeler, this, this one which, which gives you the spiral, corkscrew look, another good little knife and um, a, a nice um, uh, zigzag edge uh, or you can, this other end will give you the rounded edge. And again, another little spiraling number. So that's obviously for cooking for vegetables, but I find it used, it is well worth me having in the toolkit because I use it on, on foliage, I use it on fruit in my designs as well as the vegetables. And I don't think, I got this as a, a gift, but I don't think they're overly expensive. And I think, you know, kitchen stores or the, even the, the, the $2 stores probably have them at some point. So that covers the big bag and the small bag. And now you're going to leave me so that I can repack the bag and make it look neat and tidy for the next time. Thanks for watching.